All right, I think we're good to go ahead and get started. Opening statements from the plaintiff. Yes, Your Honor. And before you begin, I apologize to interrupt, but if I, I will instruct the scoring judges to put their, uh, their uh, view in speaker view for the opening statements, and I'll remind you to put it back into gallery view before we call the first witness. But whenever you're ready to proceed, counsel, please. Yes, Your Honor. May it please the court, counsel, members of the jury. They saw the danger. They still served the drinks. It's March 24th, 2019, and the defendant, Sonny's Rooftop Bar, serves 19-year-old Jessica Marks a beer, a shot, three hard seltzers, and an entire bottle of wine. They serve that five foot tall, 115 pound girl, a beer, a shot, three hard seltzers, and an entire bottle of wine. Ms. Marks never made it home that night. In fact, she barely made it a thousand feet out of the bar parking lot before she swerved off the side of the road and crashed her car. Today, members of the jury, you're going to learn that the defendant, Sonny's rooftop bar, could have prevented that crash. That's why we're here today. That's why Ms. Marx's mother has sued the defendant for wrongful death under the California Dram Shop Act. Now, as the plaintiff, we have the burden of proof in today's case. We have to prove to you by a preponderance of the evidence, which just means more likely than not, that the bar served Jessica Marks alcohol, even though she was obviously intoxicated, that those drinks were a substantial factor in her death, and that she was less than 21 years old, which everyone here agrees is true. Members of the jury, we're gonna meet our burden today, and we're gonna meet that burden by asking and answering three important questions throughout today's trial. First, how much alcohol did the bar serve Jessica Marks? Today we'll call to the stand Ms. Marks's best friend who was with her at the bar that night, Morgan Levin. She'll walk you through the events of March 24th and she'll tell you how the defendant served Ms. Marks drink after drink after drink. Second, what did the bartenders see? Because members of the jury, you're going to learn that it was so obvious Ms. Marks was drunk that night that there's no possible way the defendant didn't see. Didn't see her stumble, see her slouch, see her struggle to stay coherent. Members of the jury, you'll learn that the defendant's owner, Sonny Mehta, talked to Jessica Marks 10 times that night. You'll learn that he heard her slur her words. He looked into her bloodshot eyes. He saw the danger. And she still served the drinks. And third, what did the bartenders say? Because you'll learn that they knew just how dangerous this situation was. You'll hear that they joked about cutting Ms. Marks off. They said they needed to stop her from driving. You'll hear, members of the jury, that they saw the danger that they still served the drinks. That's why at the end of today's trial, I'm gonna come back before you again. I'm gonna ask that you find the defendant liable. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. Opening statements from the defense. Yes, your honor. May I proceed? You may. May it please the court, opposing counsel, members of the jury. She took the wheel. Uh, members of the jury, Ms. Connors just told you a lot 
about what happened on a Sunday night at a bar in Malibu. But in order to understand what really happened on March 24th, 2019, we have to start hours earlier. Hours before Ms. Marks entered the bar. Hours before she ordered her first drink. You learn that it was hours earlier that Ms. Marks took a decision to take the wheel. Today you'll learn that the defendant, Sonny's Rooftop Bar, and its owner, Miss Sunny Meta, that they can't be blamed for what happened that night. Because like Ms. Connors told you, the plaintiff has a burden. They have to prove to you by a preponderance of the evidence that Sonny's rooftop bar caused Miss Marx's death by serving her when she was obviously intoxicated. They won't be able to meet that burden today, members of the jury. Because you'll hear from a Sunny Meta, the owner of Sunny's Rooftop Bar herself. She'll come to the stand today and she'll tell you how she and all of her employees are trained to look for signs of obvious intoxication in their customers and that they do it on a regular basis. And Ms. Meta will tell you that on March 24th, 2019, for two and a half hours, she took Ms. Marx's order, she served her drinks but that she didn't see the danger. She didn't see any of the warning signs that Ms. Connors just told you about. But you'll learn that there were other warning signs, warning signs that were apparent before Ms. Marks even got to the bar, warning signs that Ms. Marks chose to ignore. That's why today, as defense, we're raising what's called an affirmative defense of comparative negligence. Now, all that means is that when you look at the facts, you'll be asked to decide if Ms. Marks' own decisions caused her own death on March 24th, 2019. And we'll prove that to you by focusing on two of her decisions that night. Her decision to drink and her decision to drive. You'll hear from Ms. Levin, who'll come to the stand today, and she'll tell you about what happened 45 minutes to an hour before Ms. Marks even entered the bar. You'll learn that at Ms. Marks' Airbnb, she drank, and that she chose to take the wheel and drive 30 minutes to a bar where she would drink and then drive back. You'll learn what happened just minutes before Ms. Marks' accident. How after a night full of drinking, she chose to take her keys and take the wheel. Members of the jury, it's hard for us to talk about the decisions of a 19-year-old girl who lost her life. But you'll learn today that no one else can be to blame for what happened. And that's why at the end of this trial, we'll come back and we'll ask that you find Sonny's rooftop bar not liable. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. And before the plaintiff calls its first witness, I will ask everyone to switch to gallery view. Uh, that button's up in the top right corner of your screen, and this will allow you to see all the attorneys and witnesses at the same time. Plaintiff, whenever you're ready to proceed. Yes, Your Honor. The plaintiff calls Morgan Levin to the stand. Good afternoon. Could you please introduce yourself for the members of the jury? My name is Morgan Levin. What do you do for a living? I'm a rising senior at UCLA. I'm studying biology right now. And Ms. Levin, do you know why you're in court today? I, I do. A few, few years ago, my best friend Jessica was in a car crash. She had been visiting me in LA. I'm here to, to tell you guys about that. Okay. I want to start at the beginning and walk through what happened. When was that car crash? It was the night of March 24th, 2019. And what were you and Ms. Marks doing that night? 
Jessica and I had gone to Sunny's Rooftop Bar in East Malibu. It, it was a place that people had talked about at school. I thought it might be fun. You said you went to a bar. Were you drinking? Yeah, we both were. Ms. Levin, I want to talk about how many drinks Sunny's Bar served you that night. Let the record reflect, I'm displaying a copy of what's been pre-marked as Exhibit 17, constructively outside the presence of the jury. Do you recognize this? Um, yes, it's a receipt that I signed from that night. Is it a fair and accurate copy of that receipt? It is. And do you remember who input this information? Yeah, um, one of the bartenders took our order and then he gave us the receipt. Okay. Ms. Levin, I want to walk through exactly what drinks you were served by Sonny's Bar. What were you served first? Uh, we got a bottle of red wine, which was about four glasses. Let the record reflect I'm placing four cups behind me to represent those four glasses of wine. Were you served anything else? Yes, we also got two beers and three White Claws, which are hard seltzers. Let the record reflect, I've placed five more cups behind me to represent those five more drinks. And Ms. Levin, were you served anything else? Yes, we each took a shot. Let the record reflect, I've placed two more cups behind me. Ms. Levin, out of all of these drinks, how many did you yourself have? I had three. I had a glass of wine, I had a beer, and I had a shot. Let the record reflect, I've removed three cups from behind me. Now, Ms. Levin, the other eight drinks that we just saw on that receipt a moment ago, who were those for? Jessica drank the rest of them. Now that we've talked about what you were served that night, I wanna talk about what you saw. By the end of the night, how would you describe Ms. Marx's behavior? I mean, she was loud and slurring her words. Her eyes were kind of bloodshot and she kept wobbling around when she was trying to walk. Let the record reflect, I'm displaying a copy of what's been pre-marked as Exhibit 10, the thumbnail of this video. Ms. Levin, do you recognize this thumbnail? Yeah, it's, it's from a video I took of Jess that night. When did you take it? I took it around 11 o'clock on March 24th. Move to enter Exhibit 10 into evidence. Any objections? No objections, Your Honor. So entered. Ms. Reamer, can we play that video for the members of the jury? Hi, everyone. Morgan and I are in Hollywood. We're at a bar. Um, it's kind of like a Philly bar, uh, except everything is really, really expensive. $10 for a seltzer. Um, and everyone here wants to be a model or an actress. Uh, you know, I. I'd like to thank the Academy. Mom and Dad, you've inspired me. Okay, well, go big or go home. Ms. Levin, around when you took this video throughout the night, was the staff of Sonny's Bar nearby? I mean, not every second but they were on the rooftop with us and we were there most of the time. They would come around and take orders and pass out drinks. We, we had to talk to them every time we wanted to get another drink. So you had to talk to them. Did they ever comment on Ms. Marx's behavior? The owner said something twice. When was the first time she said something? Well, we were going downstairs to go to the bathroom, just tripped on the stairs and bumped into the owner, Sonny. And Sonny said 
it looks like we need to cut this one off. Ms. Levin, after she said that, did the bar stop serving Ms. Mark's alcohol? No. We had more drinks after that. And you said the owner said something twice. When was the second time? It was right before we left. We, we went down to the bar to go get our last round. We wanted shots before we left. She said, well, I hope this one isn't driving, pointing to Jessica. After she said that, did the bar stop serving Ms. Mark's alcohol? No, like I said, we were there for our last round, so they gave us the shots. Ms. Levin, I know this might be difficult, but I wanna take a moment and talk about that accident. Would that be all right? Yes. Were you there when it happened? I was in the car right behind her. I had taken an Uber. I, I didn't feel safe driving with her and I couldn't convince her not to get her car. She said she had to. She, I was right behind her when it happened. Ms. Levin, can you tell us what you saw? Jess was driving one minute and the next, she'd swerved off the road. That was the last time I saw my best friend. Thank you for your time, Ms. Levin. Nothing further at this time, Your Honor. Thank you, Counsel. Cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor, just a moment to get situated. Good afternoon, Ms. Levin. Good afternoon. Before I begin, before I begin, I just want to say I'm sorry for your loss. Um, I'm just going to ask you a few questions about what you said on direct and what you said earlier, and then we'll get you out of here. Thank before you. Before I begin, I just want to make sure. Can you can you hear and, and see me okay? I can. Yes. Thank you. All right. I want to start off talking about your relationship uh, to this case. Ms. Levin, you know Ms. Marks' mom, Jessica's mom, right? Of course, I've known her since I was in middle school. And you were there, like you told us on direct, when Ms. Marks got into her accident. I was driving behind her, yes. Ms. Levin, you heard from Jessica's mom after the accident, didn't you? I, I did. Slevin, she blamed you for what happened. Initially, she did. I think we were all grieving and some of that became misplaced anger. She threatened to sue you, didn't she? Yes, like I said, I think some of that was just her dealing with her grief. And you, you talked to the plaintiff's counsel after this happened, right? I did. You sat down for two to three hours? Mm -hmm. That's correct. And Ms. Levin, you're testifying on behalf of Jessica's mom today, aren't you? I am. I would do anything to, to have gone back and kept Jessica safe. I'm just here to do what was right. Ms. Levin, I want to talk to you more about March 24th, 2019. Ms. Opposing Counsel, uh, Counsel, can we get a timeline up for the jury, please? Ms. Levin, you and Jessica, you started the night at Jessica's Airbnb, right? That's right. She picked me up from my dorm and we went to her Airbnb. You had a few drinks there, right? I had a glass of wine, as did Jessica, yes. Jessica actually had one or two glasses of wine? Somewhere around that, yes. And after you drank, after you were through with your time at the Airbnb, you decided to go to Sunny's rooftop bar, right? We did. Uh, can we get what's been marked as exhibit 11, uh, 19 up for the jury, please? Ms. Levin, you recognize this, right? Yes, I do. This is looks to be a map of West LA and 
Uh, yes, it appears to be. It's a fair and accurate depiction of that? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. This time we'd like to offer Exhibit 19 into evidence, Your Honor. Any objection? Without objection. So enter. Uh, Ms. Levin, I want to talk more about where Ms. Mar Ms. Marx's Airbnb was and where you decided to go. Uh, Ms. Marx's Airbnb was in Brentwood, right? That's right. And the bar, that was in Malibu, right? That's right, East Malibu. That was 30 to 40 minutes away about? Approximately, yes. And Miss Marks, she chose to drive there, right? That's right, we were using her rental car. She drove 30 to 40 minutes to Sunny's rooftop bar. That's right. And after you got to the bar, you drank. We did, yes. And Miss Marks, she drank too, right? Yes, we both did. But before you even got to the bar, you noticed that Miss Marks was displaying signs of intoxication, right? Not necessarily. I knew Jessica since I was a kid. I could tell when she was a little off. She seemed a little bit buzzed when we first got to Sunny's, but not intoxicated. She chose to drink anyway. Yes, we were at a bar. She chose to drink. Now, Miss Levin, I want to talk to you what happened after you left the bar. Well, Miss Marks, just a few minutes before she left the bar, she decided to take the wheel, didn't she? Yes, she had a flight leaving the next day and she had to return her car. She felt like she should drive. You called an Uber, didn't you? I did. You called an Uber before you closed out your town. Ma'am, you just cut out for a second. I'm not sure if that was just on my end. No, counsel, can you, uh, could you ask that question again? I'm sorry, that cut out there. Yes, Your Honor. You called an Uber before you closed out your tap. I did. And at the end of the night, you offered a ride for Miss Marks, didn't you? I did. You told her that you could take her home in the Uber too, right? Mm hmm that's right. She didn't listen though, did she? No, she decided that she wanted to drive her own car. She took the wheel and just minutes after she crashed. Yes, that's right. Thank you, Ms. Levin. No further questions. Any redirect? Uh, no redirect, Your Honor. At this time, the plaintiff rests. All right, defense, are you prepared to open your case in chief? Yes, Your Honor. At this time, defense calls Sunny Meta to the stand. Please introduce yourself to the court. Good afternoon. My name is Sunny Meta. What do you do for a living, Ms. Meta? Well, currently I'm kind of in between things, looking for the next big thing, but I used to own a bar, Sunny's Rooftop Bar. I want to talk to you, Ms. Meta, about what happened at your bar on March 24th, 2019. At this time, we'd like to display what's been marked as exhibit two on the screen, constructively outside the view of the jury. Do you recognize this woman? Yes, I do. That's Jessica Marks. Your Honor, at this time, we'd like to offer exhibit two into evidence. Any objection? Without objection, we just ask this be entered with a limiting instruction to the jury that that drink is not alcoholic. Um, counsel, is, is that your understanding as well? Is that, is that something you're willing to stipulate to? Yes, Your Honor, that is something we also agree to. All right, then so entered with that limiting instruction. Now, Ms. Mehta, you mentioned she was at your bar that night. When did she arrive at your bar? She got there at around 9 p.m. that night. And when you saw her, was she with anyone? 
Yes, uh, she was with her friend, Morgan Levin. They enter the bar. What did they do next? Well, at first they didn't order anything and they went straight upstairs to the rooftop. But after a while, they started ordering some drinks and a little bit of food. Did you take Miss Marks's orders that night? I did, yes. And would you recognize a receipt if I showed you one? Yes, I would. Your Honor, at this time, we'd like to display what's been already admitted as Exhibit 17 on the screen. Do you recognize this? Uh, yes, I do. That's the receipt from that night. Uh, you mentioned you took Miss Marks's orders. Did you also serve for drinks? I did. I was the only one serving upstairs. Now, between taking her orders and serving those drinks to her that night, about how many times would you say you interacted with her? I would say around eight to 10 times, just brief interactions, 30 seconds to a minute at max. I wanna talk about these interactions you had with Miss Marks. Did you see how she was behaving that night? Uh, just a little bit, yes. How would you describe her behavior? Um, nothing out of the ordinary. She wasn't being too loud, wasn't slurring her words. Uh, her behavior seemed okay. Uh, Miss Meta, at any point during that night, did you ever cut Miss Marks off? No, I didn't. Why not? Well, we are only instructed to cut someone off after showing the signs of obvious intoxication and- Objection. To legal conclusion regarding the phrase obvious intoxication, that's the exact legal standard in today's case. Response, Your Response. Honor. Your Honor, Ms. Meta is simply testifying about the regular practice of her business. She is instructed as she's aware of the law as she is the owner of Sunny's Rooftop Bar. She's aware of what law, she's, law she and her employees have to comply with as the owner of a bar. And she is simply testifying to what she as a bar owner is required to do legally and what she does regularly. Response? Yes, Your Honor. We just yes, ask, counsel. Yes, Your Honor. We just ask that um, Ms. Meta stray away from using the exact phrase obvious intoxication uh, in order not to confuse things for the jury. That is the exact legal standard that they're gonna need to consider at the end of today's trial. Ms. Meta can say, uh, that she needs to cut people off when they're drunk, when she sees that they're acting drunk, but for her as a lay witness, uh, regardless of her profession, to use the exact legal standard uh, does fall under a legal conclusion from a lay witness. All right, I think I know which way I'm going to rule on this. But before I do, is she testifying to what her conclusion is as to whether or not she met that standard, or is she testifying to what she's been told? Uh, like, as in that she has been told to only cut off an individual after a certain standard has been met? Your Honor, I believe my question was, uh, why didn't she cut her off? And Ms. Meta is simply testifying about when she would be instructed to cut someone off or when she is regularly you know, cutting people off in her daily practice as a bar owner. Therefore, I don't agree with counsel on that this is a legal conclusion that she's drawing. She is testifying about her regular practices as a, as a, as a bar and as a business and in that vein, she is aware of the laws that her business and she is com required to comply with. All right, so I'm gonna sustain the objection to the extent that Ms. Meta is coming to a conclusion as to whether or not the decedent was showing signs of obvious intoxication as the, that is the exact language that I'm gonna to have to instruct the jury on after closing arguments. Uh, however, Ms. Meta can say what she's been instructed as far as when to cut someone off and she can describe it in an objective way the things that she saw that night and why she didn't cut them off, but it is sustained to that extent. Your Honor, move to strike the phrase obvious intoxication in response to the question, why didn't you cut Ms. Marks off? So stricken. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Meta, I'm just gonna give you a chance to ask that, to answer that question again. Why didn't you cut Ms. Marks off then? Well, we only cut someone off if they're extremely drunk or showing the signs of someone being extremely drunk, and Ms. Marks wasn't showing those signs that night. Have you ever had customers at your bar that are showing those signs? Uh, yes, I have. They come in sometimes and they order a little too much and drink a little too much, so that's when we need to cut them off. 
I want to be clear about how Miss Marks was acting that night. You mentioned you look for signs. What are some of those signs that you look for? Well, those signs, there's a lot. It depends on the person, but the most common ones are bloodshot eyes, not making sense, uh, lack of hand-eye coordination, a vacant gaze, um, stuff like that. And at any point that night, did you see Miss Marks displaying those signs? No, not that night, not in front of me. Did you see her stumble on the stairs? No, I did not. Now, you mentioned that she walked in with someone else, her friend. Did you see how she was acting that night? Yes, I did. I was a little bit more concerned about Miss Levin. Uh, she looked a little bit more drunk than Jessica did. Why would you say that? Well, there was a few instances where she was acting a bit drunk up when she was signing the receipt, her hand was shaking a lot and she stumbled a little bit. And what did you do in response to this? Well, I just made sure that she wasn't going to be the one driving home that night. So I just asked Jessica if Morgan was going to be driving home and Jessica said no. I want to talk to you about when they left the bar. When did you see them leave the bar that night? They left at around 11, 45, 12. They stayed for about three hours. Was that the last time you saw Miss Marks? Yes, it was. No further questions at this time, Your Honor. Cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Miss Meta. Good afternoon. I want to start out by talking about what you served Ms. Marks on March 24th. Now, a few moments ago, you told us on direct examination that Ms. Marks never seemed drunk to you that night at all, right? Not really. I mean, maybe a little bit tipsy, but not, uh, not overly drunk, no. But at any point in the night that you interacted with Ms. Marks, you never saw her displaying symptoms of intoxication? Objection, Your Honor. Yeah. I Objection, Your Honor. I just Don't interrupt the witness and let her finish her answer. Response. Uh, if I if I interrupted, that uh, it was not intentional. All right, that sounds like we're in agreement. You can proceed. Yes, Your Honor. So it's your testimony that at any point that you interacted with Ms. Marks that night, she never showed symptoms of intoxication, right? She did it. Well. Ms. Meta, that night you personally brought over nine drinks of alcohol to her table, didn't you? Yes, I did. I'm not sure. She was sharing drinks with Morgan, so I'm not uh, sure who had which one. But yes, I did bring those drinks to the table. Let's walk through them one by one. You brought a full bottle of wine, right? Yes, I did. You brought two shots with hard liquor in them? Yes, I did. You brought three seltzers with 8% alcohol? That's correct, yes. You brought them two beers, right? Yes, that's correct. Again, they were sharing drinks. I'm not sure who had which one, but I did bring all of them. Right, they were sharing drinks and Ms. Marks herself ordered about half. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. She looked to be about five feet to you? Uh, yes, she did. She looked to be about 110 pounds. About that weight, I'm not quite sure. Ms. Meta, you're telling us that after being served all of that alcohol, that five foot tall 19 year old looks perfectly sober walking out of your bar? Well, I'm, everyone reacts to alcohol differently. I've, not everyone shows those obvious signs of intoxication. And uh, I wasn't, she didn't portray any of those symptoms to me. So that's a yes to my question? Well, when she walked out of the bar, she may have been a little tipsy, but that's about it, yes. Let's talk about what you said that night. Or, Ms. Meta, you said that she was a little tipsy. In your deposition, you said that she was sober, right? She looked sober? Yes, that's correct. Well, let's talk about what you said to the police. Because after Ms. Marks died, you were questioned by the police, right? Yes, that's correct. You didn't tell them Ms. Marks looked sober walking out of your bar, did you? I said she looked like a typical buzzed girl. That's what I said. Right. You told them she was buzzed, but now you know just how drunk Ms. Marks was, don't you? Uh, well, I'm not sure exactly how drunk she was, but... You know that her BAC was 0.16? Yes, that's what I was told after she left the bar. 
You know, that's 16 times the legal limit for someone under 21. That's correct. But again, everyone responds to alcohol differently. Well, let's talk about every single opportunity you had that night to see how intoxicated Ms. Marks was. Because you were the only person waiting tables that night, right? Yes, that's correct. Like you said, on direct examination, you interacted with Ms. Marks eight to 10 times that night. Yes, that sounds right. Just brief, small interactions. Eight to 10 times throughout the night that you were within feet of Ms. Marks, right? Yes, that's correct. Just uh, short getting her order. That's about it. Let the record reflect I'm displaying what was earlier admitted into evidence as Exhibit 10. You saw this video, right, Ms. Meta? Yes, I was shown it during my deposition. And you saw it earlier today in trial, right? Yes. Uh, no, I don't remember. Yes, I did see it earlier today. So, Ms. Meta, you'd agree that in that video, Ms. Lar Ms. Marks looks pretty, pretty intoxicated, right? Well, I can't be quite sure. It's possible that she might be intoxicated, but from my, from what I remember seeing about the video, it was just 30 seconds long. So that's a yes. She looks like she's had some drinks in that video. Well, yes, it's possible, but I can't be quite sure. Well, you actually went up to Ms. Marks's table more than once right around when this video was taken, didn't you? Well, I'm not sure when the video was taken, but yes, that's possible. Let's walk through that. Now, Ms. Meta, uh, let, I want to talk about exact. I, I want to talk about those specific times that you saw Ms. Marks. Let the record reflect. I'm displaying what's been pre-marked as exhibits 15 and 16, constructively outside the presence of the jury. You've been shown these before, right? Yes, I have. That looks like a table in your bar. Yes, it does. That looks like Jessica Marks. Um, yes, I guess it does. In your deposition, you said it looks like Jessica Marks. Yes, I did. Those look like the drinks you served them? Yes, it does. That looks like it was taken from the vantage point of where Ms. Levin was sitting, right? Yes, it does. Move to enter exhibits 15 and 16 into evidence, Your Honor. Any objection? No objections, Your Honor. So entered. Now, Ms. Betta, you understand your counsel has stipulated exhibit 15 was taken at 1057, and exhibit 16 was taken at 1132. Right? Yes, I understand that. And you heard when Ms. Levin said earlier today that that video we talked about was taken around 11, right? Yes, I did. Ms. Reamer, can we get all those times up on screen? Ms. Meta, you'd understand. This means that those pictures were taken within about a half an hour of when the video was taken, right? Yes, that's correct. So Ms. Meta, Sometime within about a half an hour of when that video was taken, you went up to Ms. Marks's table and you refilled her water carafe, right? Yes, that's what it looks like. That's correct. Sometime, excuse me. Sometime within about a half an hour of when that video was taken, you went up to Ms. Marks's table, you took away the chips. Uh, yes, that's correct. Ms. Meta, sometime within about a half an hour of when that video was taken, you went up to Ms. Marks's table you took away the wine glass. Yes, that's correct. And sometime within about a half an hour of when that video was taken, you went up to Ms. Marks's table, you served a new glass of beer, right? Um, yes, uh, it may have been before the video, but yes, that's correct. Thank you. No further questions at this time, Your Honor. Can you redirect? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Meta, I just wanna to talk to you a little bit about that video that was just played earlier on Ms. Levin's direct examination. Uh, you mentioned that you were on the rooftop that night. Um, did you ever, were, had you ever seen that video before today in trial? Uh, I had seen it during my deposition, but I wasn't there when it was being filmed. I wasn't, I didn't see the video being filmed, no. At any point that night, did Ms. Levin or Ms. Mark show you that video? No, they didn't. And at any point that night, did Miss Marks exhibit the symptoms that she exhibited on that video? Uh, no, not in front of me. No, she wasn't being louder than usual or slurring her words or anything like that. I wanna to talk to you also about the drinks that you served Miss Marks. Opposing counsel mentioned a lot of drinks that you served that table.
Apologies, Your Honor. I believe we were kicked out due to Wi-Fi issues. I think so. Is everybody back? Yes, yes Your Honor. We're good to go. Can I start where I left off, Your Honor? Please do. All right, Ms. Mudd, I want to talk to you about the drinks you served at table that night. Do you know who drank what specifically? No, I don't. I think Jessica ordered about half, but I'm not quite sure if she drank all of those drinks. And you also heard about a BAC level that night. You don't know, do you know Miss, Miss Marks' BAC from when she was at the bar that night? Uh, I didn't know it at the night of. There was no way for me to check her BAC level when she was at the bar. I was just told about it later. No further questions, Your Honor. Any recross based on that? No recross, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Matter, you're excused. Uh, do you have any further witnesses, Defense Counsel? Or are you ready to rest your case in chief? No, Your Honor, we're ready to rest our case in chief. Before you do, I, I want to clean something up with the record. So Exhibit 17 was referenced and questions were asked about it, I believe, on several occasions, at, at least on each witness. Uh, however, that was never formally tendered into evidence. Would the parties like that to be received into evidence for the purposes of closing arguments? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Excuse me if I did not submit that. That was my intention. No problem. All right. Plaintiff is ready to proceed with closing arguments. All right, thank you. Uh, we will now hear closing arguments from each party. So everyone should please switch back to speaker view. Also, since both witnesses have completed their testimony, you can complete the witness portion of your ballot. And plaintiff counsel, whenever you're ready to proceed. Yes, Your Honor. May it please the court, counsel, members of the jury. They saw the danger and they still served the drinks. One beer, one shot, one, two, three hard seltzers and one, two, three glasses of wine. That's what the defendant served Jessica Marks on March 24th, 2019. They served that five foot tall, 115 pound teenager, all of this alcohol. They saw her get drunker and drunker and drunker throughout the night. They looked into her bloodshot eyes. They saw the danger. They still served the drinks. That's why we're here today. That's why we've sued Sonny's rooftop bar for wrongful death under the California Dram Shop Act. Because the law says that Sonny's Bar has the responsibility to stop serving alcohol to people who are obviously intoxicated, who are clearly drunk. And when they ignore that responsibility, when they serve alcohol to someone who's under 21, clearly drunk, and that person gets hurt as a result, the bar can be held liable. Now we all agree that Ms. Marks was less than 21. So all you gotta consider today, members of the jury, is whether or not she was obviously intoxicated and whether or not those drinks were a substantial factor in her death. We have the burden of proof. So we have to prove those two things to you by a preponderance of the evidence. We have to show you they're more likely than not. Make no mistake, members of the jury, we've met that burden today. And to show you why, I want to return to the three questions I asked you at the beginning of today's trial. First, how much alcohol did the bar serve, Ms. Marks? Well, you saw exactly how much in court today. You heard about the shots, about the beer, about the seltzers, about the wine. You heard how this was all served to a five foot tall, 19 year old girl who weighed 115 pounds. The staff at Sonny's bar saw that five foot tall girl walk into their bar, served her all of these drinks, and then came to court today claiming they never knew she was intoxicated. Members of the jury, it doesn't take much more than common sense. If you serve a five foot tall, 115 pound teenager, all of this alcohol, she's not gonna walk out of your bar perfectly sober like Ms. Meta tried to claim in court today. Which brings me to my second question. 
After serving Ms. Marks all of that alcohol, what did the bartender see? Well, members of the jury, you know what they saw because you saw it too. We showed you a video of Ms. Marks today. She was slurring her words, she was slouching, she was struggling to stay coherent. And Ms. Maida talked to her within 30 minutes of when that video was taken. Ms. Maida said herself, opposing counsel said herself today that Ms. Maida went up and took Ms. Marks's order five times. She served Ms. Marks five times. Ms. Marks was at the bar for three hours, drinking and drinking and drinking. And the defense wants you to believe no one ever saw she was drunk. The defense wants you to believe that Ms. Maida walked up to Ms. Marks just minutes after that video was taken, looked her in the eye and saw a girl who was perfectly sober. Well, we know just how absurd that is because of the third question I asked you, what did the bartender say? Because you heard from Ms. Levin how Ms. Marks stumbled on the stairs and fell into Sunny Meta herself. You heard how Ms. Meta said we might need to cut this one off. You heard how he, she didn't stop serving her drinks. You heard how Ms. Maida saw her again later on in the evening and said, I hope this one isn't driving. You heard how she then poured her another shot. Right after Ms. Maida poured that last shot, Ms. Marks walked out of the bar. She got in her car. She never made it home. They saw the danger. They still served the drinks. Now, opposing counsel has raised an affirmative defense in today's case. All day today, they've tried to blame Ms. Marks for her own death. They've tried to tell you that the tragic death of a 19-year-old girl is on the hands of the 19-year-old, not the adults who should have known better, not the adults who the law says need to know better. Well, here's the problem with the defense's argument, members of the jury. They've asked you to believe two things. On the one hand, they've asked you to believe that Ms. Marks was so drunk that night that when she got behind the wheel of her car, she assumed full responsibility for her death. Members of the jury, they introduced more alcohol today than we did. They said that she was drinking before she even got to the bar. But on the other hand, at the same time, they've asked you to believe Miss Meta. They've asked you to believe Miss Meta when she says she never noticed Ms. Marks acting drunk. Members of the jury, they don't get to have it both ways. Either she was drunk or she wasn't. Either they saw or they wasn't. They said she took the wheel. Members of the jury, Sonny's bar might as well put her in the driver's seat. They saw the danger. They still served the drinks. Now, I can't tell you why the bartenders at Sonny's bar made those choices that night. Maybe Sonny Meta really needed the extra 40 bucks. Maybe he didn't want to deal with an upset customer. Well, we know they saw the danger and we know they served the drinks. Find the defendant liable. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. Closing arguments from the defense whenever you're ready to proceed. Yes, your honor. Judge Johnson, Ms. Connors, members of the jury. She took the wheel. What she just heard today in this trial and Ms. Connors closing argument fails to answer the burden. It fails to meet the burden that the plaintiff has. Today you learned that Ms. Marks was at a bar. The opposing counsel introduced a lot of evidence about what she drank and who served her. But members of the jury, that's not what this case is about. The plaintiff had a burden today. They had to prove to you 
by a preponderance of the evidence. More likely than not, not only that Miss Marks was intoxicated that night, because we don't dispute that. We don't dispute that Miss Marks was intoxicated. We don't dispute that Sunny Meta served Miss Marks drinks. We don't dispute that she ordered those drinks from her bar. But members of the jury, the question is, was her intoxication obvious to the trained employees of Sunny's rooftop bar? And members of the jury, they failed to meet that burden today. They didn't prove to you that her intoxication was obvious. They focused on two things. What Ms. Marks drank, what she was served, and what the defendants saw. But members of the jury, they weren't able to prove obvious intoxication. They weren't able to prove that Sunny Meta saw obvious intoxication. You heard from Sunny Meta today, the owner of Sunny's rooftop bar, who told you how she served Miss Marks drinks, but didn't see any of the warning signs. And members of the jury, opposing counsel focused a lot on what Miss Marks drank that night, but members of the jury, that doesn't tell us how she was behaving. They told you Miss Marks was served three white seltzers. They told you Miss Marks was served a glass of beer, but they never told you, or they could never prove how she was acting when she was served those drinks. They never proved that Miss Meta saw obvious intoxication. What she drank and what they served is not enough to know that because like Miss Meta told you on the stand today, everybody reacts to alcohol differently. And we haven't saw obvious intoxication in Jessica Marks that night because she did. Now the crux of the plaintiff's case rests on a video. They showed you a 40 second video taken at a moment in time at the bar that night. But members of the jury, you learned that Miss Meta wasn't around when that video was filmed, didn't see Miss Marks acting like that. You learned that she was never shown that video that night. You learned that she never saw Miss Marks acting that way. That video doesn't tell us much. Like Miss Meta told you, she served Miss Marks for two and a half hours that night. That video, that video was 40 seconds. We don't know if that video was a skit, if it was an act. All we know is that opposing counsel is trying to tell you that Miss Marks' behavior in that video is Miss Marks' behavior in front of the defendant, but they haven't proved that to you today. Opposing, what we do know, members of the jury, is what happened before Miss Marks got to the bar. What happened while she was at the bar and what happened after. You learned from Miss Levin that just 45 minutes to 30 minutes before she got to the bar, Miss Marks took a decision. She took a decision to take the wheel after drinking at her Airbnb. She took a decision to drink at the bar knowing that she would have to get in the car and drive back. You learned that Miss You learned that Miss Levin offered Miss Marks a ride in her Uber, but that Miss Marks chose to deny that offer. She chose to take the wheel and take her keys. Members of the jury, it's difficult for us to ask you to place the blame on a 19 year old girl, but we ask you to consider the law. The law says that a negligent person fails to act with reasonable care and members of the jury, we prove to you that Miss Marks failed to act with reasonable care when she took the decision to take the wheel after drinking at her Airbnb. When she took the decision to take the wheel after drinking at the bar. We agree with plaintiff's counsel in that this could have been prevented. But you can't blame Sunny's rooftop bar because they didn't see the danger. 
they didn't see the warning signs. One person saw the warning signs that night, and that was Miss Marks herself. But instead, she took the decision to take the wheel, and at the end of the night, it took her life. That's why today we ask you to consider what the law says and find Sonny's rooftop bar not liable. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. Any rebuttal? Yes, Your Honor. May I proceed? You may. Members of the jury, opposing counsel, may it please the court. If you walked up to Ms. Marks just minutes after that video was taken and looked her in the eye, you would have thought she was drunk. You would have seen the danger, members of the jury, just like Ms. Meta, and she still served the drinks. Find the defendant live. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. Judges should please complete their ballots and click submit. I'll ask everyone to stay on until everyone has submitted their ballots, and then we'll do uh, some brief comments for the attorneys. Thank you all.